This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is the third lecture on interest rate futures, um, which is chapter 20 of the paper P4 notes. Now, we've already uh, had two lectures. In the last lecture, I went through a very simple example. What we're going to do now is go through a full example with everything in it. Uh, and the example I'm going to use is on page 119 of the course notes. Uh, and it's example 4. So, let's have a look. Barbara intends to borrow 40 million for six months, starting on the 1st of January. Today is the 1st of November. The LIBOR is 6% and Barbara can borrow at 1% above LIBOR. Okay, well, before we go any further, let's do my reference point and let's work out what interest would be payable if interest rates were to stay unchanged. So the loan interest at the current interest rate, uh, she's borrowing 40 million. LIBOR is six, but she has to pay 1% extra. Clearly for different risks in companies, they'll be charged extra. She'll surely pay 7%. Now the loans are six months. And so the total interest, 40 million, 7%, six months, uh, I get 1.4 million. However, as always, the problem is that interest rates stand to change, we're at risk. And so what are we going to do? As of today, the 1st of November, We'll leave the loan at risk. By that, as always, I mean uh, leave the loan, but when the loan starts on 1st of January, we'll pay whatever the interest happens to be. But to hedge against that risk, we'll start a futures deal. And so let's write down what deal we're going to have. If you look back at the question, first of all, there are three interest rate futures available, January, February, March. But we've already dealt with, I've said enough times, the relevance of those dates. A January one would have to finish by the end of January, a February one any time up to the end of February, a March one any time up to the end of March. Well, we'll use the normal rule for the exam. Uh, take the first available future. And since our loan starts on 1st of January, take the first future after that date, which here is January. So we'll choose January futures. And the price of those today is 93.5. And from now on, the other two futures are completely irrelevant to us. Secondly, we can either sell, uh, buy or sell futures. Well, I won't repeat the rule I had last time. Well, effectively I will, but I'm not going to write it down. Uh, but I explained last time that if you're borrowing money, you will always sell futures. So we'll sell January futures today at 93.5. And when we come to finish the deal, we'll buy them at whatever the price happens to be then. Uh, finally, how much are we actually going to deal in uh, and here, two things. It's not just the amount we're going to deal in, but uh, we have to deal in fixed size contracts. If you look above the futures table, it says the contract size is 1 million. So how many contracts are we going to deal with? Well, I went through the rule last time. You take the amount of the loan, 40 million, you then multiply by the length of the loan here is six months over three. And I will write it down again, but I'm not going to explain why again. The six is the length of the loan. 
3 is always 3 because they're three month futures. And so that's the amount we want to deal in. It has to be in fixed size contracts. The contract size is a million. And so what's it come to? Um, it's 80 contracts. Here it did divide exactly, which is great. If it hadn't have divided exactly, if you'd got 80.2 or something, then we go to the nearest contract. And so uh, we're still today, 1st of November. On the 1st of November, we will sell 80 January contracts at 93.5. Well, that's fine. Uh, we, uh, again, it's just a phone call. We've no money changes hands apart from the deposit. But we now wait until the start of the loan. Uh, which here is 1st of January. And on the 1st of January, the start of the loan. Uh, on, on the loan itself, we'll pay whatever the interest happens to be. Uh, but at the same day, we'll finish our futures deal. And so before we see what happens, uh, we need to know what is the interest rate. And of course, what's the January futures price? Well, the question here tells us, part A, assume that on the 1st of January, LIBOR has risen to 9%. So the interest rate's gone up to 9. Uh, remember, though, Barbara, uh, it says on the second line, Barbara borrows at 1% above LIBOR. So uh, when LIBOR was 6%, Barbara was having to pay 7 Well, we would assume it's always, she always pays 1% more. So Barbara will actually be paying 10%. We also, though, need to know the, uh, the January futures price. And there we have a problem. Um, we're not told. And so, if, we, if not told, we're going to have to estimate the futures price. And the way we do it is exactly the same as the way we did it for currency futures. We say, first of all, as of today, which is 1st of November, what difference is there? And we're going to assume that difference falls linear, linearly to zero. And so let's write it down. First of all, as of today, the January futures price on the 1st of November was 93.5. We're going to compare that with the interest rate uh, again on the 1st of November. Well, two things here. First of all, and I think very sensibly, futures do move with interest rates, but they will move with LIBOR. And of course, LIBOR was 6%. To be able to compare them, we restate that as an equivalent futures price. And way back in the first lecture we did, um, interest of 6% is equivalent to a futures price of 94. And so, at the moment, they don't sort of exactly match. The difference is what? 0.5. Well, that's the position on the 1st of November. We want to estimate what it is at the start of the loan which is the 1st of January. You know what LIBOR is? LIBOR is 9%. Uh, the equivalent futures price would be 91. But our job is to estimate the futures price. Well, as I say, we do, do exactly what we did before. We assume that the difference, which started at 0.5, we assume it falls linearly to zero 
over the life of the future. These futures are January futures, so the end of the future is the uh, 31st of January. And so we just estimate what the difference is going to be. Well, November to January is what? Uh, November, December, January is three months. 1st of January, at that stage, there's only one month left. And so the difference will have fallen by two-thirds. It will only be a third of 0.5, which is what? It's 0.17. And so given that we know the interest rate, it means that the futures price, or our estimate of it, is 90.83. Now we know the futures price. Now we can show what actually happens on the 1st of January, the start of the loan. Uh, the loan interest. Uh, we pay whatever the actual rate turns out to be. Uh, the loan, remember, was 40 million. Uh, LIBOR is 9, but remember, Barbara pays 10%. Uh, and it's for six months. And so the interest payable will have gone up substantially to, to two million. And so although I'll look back later, uh, we pay we, we end up paying uh, sorry, Barbara ends up paying far more interest. However, we'll make a profit on our futures. We finished the futures deal, and how much did we dealt in? There were 80 contracts. Each contract was 1 million. And the profit, it's the sell minus the buy, divided by 400. Here we started the deal by selling when the price was 93.5. We finished the deal, we buy them at the start of the loan, 1st of January, when we've worked out it's 90.83. And so the profit on the futures I get to be 534,000. It's a profit, it's a receipt. And so the net result there's a net payment here uh, 2 million minus 534,000, a net payment of 1.466 million. And so, as I think you'd have expected, um, it's not a perfect hedge in that um, at today's interest rate, she'd have been paying 1.4 million. She ends up paying a net 1.466. However, the futures deal has gone a long way, obviously, to hedging um, the extra loan interest. Well, there it is. Uh, here, though, uh, the question asks for two extra little bits, which are less likely, but would be silly not to do because they could be asked. He wants us to do get the hedging efficiency. Well, you know how to do that from um, currency futures. And it's exactly the same uh, approach here. Uh, also, the effective interest rate. We did that in one of the earlier chapters as well. So you have a go at parts B and C. But in the next lecture, I'll check. Uh, for the same example, obviously, we'll, I'll finish it off. And we'll work out the efficiency and the interest rate.